Oh my goodness, Ryan. We're back. Feels like I never left. Did you watch Predator Prey yet? I have not, no. Damn it, Ryan. Eh. Dude, I'm so excited. This is the pre-show. This is the pre-show. We do a pre-show. I, I forget that every time until we get in the room and hit the button. Yeah. There's you realize, wait a minute, it's, it's a false start. Right. Gotcha. This is you your know. reward. You know. This is what you get, comic fam. We I actually guess. have a lot of fun things coming, and shout out to Tough Book who just joined us. Um, we have some announcements today. Um, the show is expanding. We got Emerald City Comic Con this weekend. We're going to go pick up Ben T. He literally is like, what time is, is that? Is that why you're so stressed about time? Yeah, dude. We got to go pick up Ben T, okay. and he's going to do a fine. big old signing no and hook up the comic fam. It's going to be really cool. We also have a stream immediately after this that we're we doing. Do. and. Yeah, it's just too much, too Here's many, too many things, but it's going to be a good time. We're going to be doing podcast number 68. And you know why I remembered that number. Why is that? Six and eight are your favorite numbers. They're my favorite. So when you when combine you them, it's like your super favorite number. That's exactly. Why. You flip them upside down. It's 89. That's why. Yeah, it's crazy. That's so crazy. Um, I also wanted to mention that we're going to be talking about Batman today. Yes. We're talking about an independent comic book today that people got to read. We also are going to be talking about yeah, like two independent. Oh books. my gosh, an option book that you yeah. pretty much called, yeah. dude. You came over here and you're like, dude, we got to go and buy these books, man, because I really have a good feeling about this book. Next damn day, Brian it was insane. All right, quick, so quick option on that one. Yeah, what's up? I don't want to take full credit, but I'll, I'll take credit. You got to take some. Take, 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 take the credit that I give you. Big shout out to Agu Rhythm who just joined us um, in the chat. Okay, uh, podcast number 68. Are you are you ready, my man? I think I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Oh, my goodness. Comic fan, buckle up. It's going to be a fun ride. Let's get into it. Hello, comic fam. It's the Bags and Boards podcast. Number 68, and I'm here with Fire Guy Ryan. Ryan started the fire! My brother, we read some damn good comic books this week. How you feeling? Uh, it's good to be back. It's been a while since yeah. we've done a podcast. Yeah, but we're, we're getting back to it, man. It doesn't feel like it, but it's been a long time. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. We're doing this thing. It's a 55,000 subscriber milestone giveaway. It's for this book right behind me. Invincible number one, Omni-Man, Tyler Kirkham, Battle Damage Variant. And yo, if you don't have over an hour to join us on YouTube to watch us as we chat, make sure to visit SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, or iTunes. This is where we put the uh, audio-only versions. If you want to listen to us at your leisure. We got to give some shout-outs, sponsors of the show. Um, and when I say sponsors, it's like the first way to directly support everything that we do here. It's uh, the excuse you give me to send you comics every single month. ComicTom101.com. And we got some announcements to talk about. This right here, Ryan. I'm excited for Was this. the hardest oh. secret that I've ever had to keep from anybody on the team and in the comic fam. Look at this. We have something that's taken me. Months and months and months and months and months of work to make a reality. Oh, I just noticed the, the angle on this picture. This is a, this is such a, you guys need to look at this image. We're going to show them here in a second. Show we're going to show them. Okay. Get to it. All right. We're Man. doing it. My first Invincible variant. Hot damn comic there fam. You go. John Boy thing. Myers, Invincible number one, full wraparound cover. Hot damn. Yes. It took, it took a while, comic fan, but we made it happen. I want to give a big shout out to Skybound, Sean Kirkham, Robert Kirkman, Arun. We had so many amazing team members from publishing and then the very talented, the impeccable John Boy Myers come together to make this cover. And it took a while, but it's here. And we are an active enrollment, comictom101.com to join. And this isn't the only cover that we made. Yes. Uh, we got to show you because there's only a handful of Invincible comics that exist, comic fam. And uh, the main thing is that um, this is owned by Robert Kirkman. So you don't see a whole lot of store variants eligible to be purchased um, because they don't make a lot of them. Same thing with Walking Dead. These are IPs that he owns, goes through Skybound. So we were patient. And with the amazing team at Skybound, we were granted the ability to team up with John Boy to make this cover. This would be, this will be, this was 1500 printed. We haven't gone through damages yet. We're still selling books. We update our print counts after the mail call is done, but I'm going to tell you what we actually ordered and you know, we'll see what we're left with. We'll keep you updated, but we also have a virgin variant that was printed to 1000 
And then we have a, it, it's a limited color variant. The, the book was too damn gorgeous for me not to color some of it. And when I say me, I had nothing to do with the coloring. This you was all color John it? Boy Myers. You're not a colorist? I'm not a colorist, believe it or not. Comic I love fam. this one. Look at the, like the, it really pops the blood and you can see how he entered in through the, the skull and flew out of the stomach and up at the camera. I like, I, I kind of like this better than the, 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 oh. the, the Kirkham book. Comic yeah. fam, yeah. I can't yeah. say that. Yeah. I, I can't, can. I can't say that, Ryan. <laughs> They're both great. I think, I think what They're Tyler did great. was, Amazing and, and groundbreaking, but you know what? We wraps around. It does. It you does. Know? It does wrap around. It, wrap, it wraps around real nice, comic fam. Um, but we also made a foil. We made a foil, and I printed them to one hundred and twenty. That is it. Going out at random, one per box this month, all the way through September fifteenth at midnight, or until we sell out of copies. This right here, uh, it, it took so long. I'm so proud of this. Big thank you to John Boy Myers. We got to give some love to John Boy Myers comic fam. This is his Instagram. Give him a follow. This gentleman does some of the best covers, variant covers in the game. Look at his remarks. I think a lot of artists learn from his quality that he brings to each and every cover, especially at conventions. And it's like they got to keep up. They got to keep up, keep up because it's so damn detailed memorable look at his turtle remarks that he does i'm going to put the link in the description to follow him on instagram a friend of the show we did our first tmnt cover with john boy myers and i'll tell you comic fam this gentleman cares about the collectible he cares about you guys really enjoying your books enjoying them slabbed remarked however you like it we want to make sure that that happens and he cares about that throughout the process of making this homage he actually wanted to push to do the trade dress vertically, which hadn't been done at IDW yet. And he fought that battle because he wanted to make the first vertical IDW, like TMNT trade dress with us. And we were able to make that happen over a year ago. And I thought it was about damn time we teamed back up again. And I think, I think he delivered. Not, I don't think I know. Look at this comic fam, hot damn comic fam. Also, you can follow us on our second sponsored uh, page, which is by Whatnot, the best new place to buy and sell collectibles. Um, we do dollar start auctions that last as little as 15 seconds long. And Fire Guy Ryan has officially joined um, doing way more stuff for the show to pump out more content. And we've started a show on Tuesdays. And uh, Ryan, what's today? Uh... I think it's Tuesday. That's right. We're going to be streaming live through the powers of the internet on whatnot after the show. So join us by clicking the link in the description, um, a sponsor of the podcast, our first sponsor of two that we had sealed the deal with a short, maybe eight months ago, seven months ago. But until then, the first sponsor we ever had on the show in four years. So we want to give a big thank you to them and Let's start the podcast because we have some comic books that we read and I want to start them with Batman. What do you think? Uh, I would very much love to. I, I'm very proud of this one. I, I say that like I created this book, but I, I'm very, I, love, I love this comic. It's All right. So we're talking about um, Chip Zdarsky. Let, let's are. get into it. Yeah. Mr. Zdarsky has recently taken over writing duties for the main Batman title over at DC Comics. And we've kind of been pretty on top. Well, I guess we, we did uh, we did James Tynan's first story arc when he took over. We've even covered uh, Tom King's run. Pretty, I mean, it wasn't during the time. A lot of that was before we started, too, but yeah. But we've, like, s since then have gone back and made multiple videos about the differences in how he handled the run versus other uh, members who have passed that, that, that the torch, the cowl. Right. Yeah. So it just made sense. Like, he's, uh, Chip Zdarsky is now two issues into his run of Batman, so we thought we would check in and give you guys a little little rundown of how things are getting started. Yeah, I'm really hyped, man, because there's been a lot of uh, a lot of dire situations that Bruce Wayne's been in in the last few years, and we've had some like monumental stories that have been told. But the two issues, we're going to talk about Batman 125 and very lightly on 126, really not at all, because you got to go and pick these comics Just up, Adam. Out, like, you can still ago. get it. Go to your LCS and pick up 126. We're going to give you a little bit spoilers of 125. So much fun. I had a hell of a time reading this, and it's not just because I'm a big fan of Chip. I know you are too. Gigantic Chip fan, yes. Okay. Um, and we're going to get into some reasons why we really like him, because he's uh, he's also hilarious, and, and he seems like a really cool person. But let's talk about his uh, joining to the writer's team here, because we have the same 
creative team as far as uh, artists goes. Right. The art team of Jorge Jimenez and Tomio Mori uh, on pencils and colors, they did a lot of the James Tynan run. Isn't it interesting how different year. this looks too? Like for being the same run, same creative team to a degree. Same artist, art team anyway. Um, would you, do you suspect that there's a chance that, that Chip had something to do with this because it's more dark? I feel like the, you not feel, I know. You told me like, hey, let's make sure we get the new colorist's info because it's clearly a different colorist. I thought it was a different colorist. We knew colorist. it was the same penciler, but like, mm-hmm. I thought it was a different colorist too. It's a completely different tone. And uh, if you remember during the... Uh, the James Tynan run on Batman. It's like punchline stuff, right? Comic Fam. and punchline. A lot of right. bright greens. Vibrant. Really cool colors. Yeah. I fell in love with Tomi Omori at that point. A very good follow on Instagram, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, we thought this was different because this whole, the color palette here, which we're going to get into, we'll show you some of the interiors here. A little bit more muted. Muted, Not as, not as sure. flashy and fun and exciting as, uh, as it was last year. But you know what? A little bit grounding now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad because once you get through this, you know, this is the first page here and... You know, if you're a, a fan of, of Snyder's class uh, that he does on Substack, where he talks about writing comic books, um, he brings James Tynan on, he's brought uh, Greg Capullo on. Something that is a, a thing that they like to go back to is the the impact of a good first page. And this right here just shows it classically done. We, we are seeing... To, we need to build a show. We need to. Do, I think it'd be cool to take a bunch of different comics and examine their first pages and do like a, a segment on it. At like one first point. page only. Do like, this, like, don't do this. Yeah, because right? like... The fir- your, this is your taste. You open the book, bam, this is what you get. I don't is talk that about that often, you know? Like when I read a comic book, especially a new series, I put so much... Um, like stock and like wait on that first page. Yeah, it, I'm the like first panel, the first words, like it's all very important. You got you got to get hooked. Yeah, I'm looking for the the the, the crescendo for sure. You know, I, I want to see that 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 powerful ending that makes me want to get the next issue, but the first page and I'll even grant it like the first 3 pages sometimes. We'll get to a book that did that um in our reviews today. But the first page really, if you do that well, oh, it's just as impactful as a as a as a gotcha moment, as a reveal, you know? I do know. All right. Well, we have uh, someone who is dead right now, which uh, is unfortunate. I miss Alfred, by the I way. Do. He's been dead for quite a long time. R.I.P. Longer but, than I would have thought. But who would have thought that his death would allow for some of the most innovative Batman narratives that and have, Nightwing uh, and Nightwing, Nightwing, maybe hot damn. All it's right. Like the best book DC has right now. Pretty right. much. So we're seeing a flashback. We're seeing the um, the history of uh, uh, he's just like Bruce Wayne's history, the characters he's come across and in, his, in the collection that he has amassed. Um, Class but, of Batcave shot. Classic Batcave. We're going to be diving into the history of Batman to a degree because Although of decisions to, he made in the, pla- the past. And you do need to pay attention to this first page. Uh, you see uh, Alfred cleaning up a little bit. Yep. And then there is a beep up in the top right. Kind of hard to see. Yeah, I can zoom in. There's a here. beeping up there. That right there. That's that's what uh, that attention. matters here. Pay attention Correct. to these kind of things here because at the very bottom, we're going to make it, make sure that the reader sees that. Um, rather, Chip will. Um, this right here is foreshadowing what's to come, really what this whole narrative is about, which is in the past, Batman making a decision to do something that could alter the future. And we're going to be uh, sealing the consequences of that because even Batman has, uh, even Batman can't think of everything, even though he is traditionally the character that does. We have um, shot is so good. a great shot that beautifully depicts the differences between the art styles being used here and from True. recent past. I would like to see how this would be colored differently, you know? Right. This, the, it's the same penciler, same colorist, but you put a different writer on here, you tell a different story, suddenly you have to show the image in a different way. Mm-hmm. But I love, this is, this is so good. Like, I want, I want a poster of this. This is terrifying. What, POV, you are a criminal about to get the worst beating of your entire life. And I'll remind the comic fam that currently Bruce Wayne is broke. Right. He is doing this civilian lifestyle. And he also only has time, really, to be Batman now. You know, if he's just going to be himself, he's not, he's not going to parties, he's not being Bruce Wayne billionaire. Well, they do get into that in this issue. Chip Zdarsky does bring that aspect of his life up. But yeah, he's he basically says, I'm not getting invited to any more swanky galas anymore because I'm broke. I'm not going to like get invited to fundraisers or really, you know, big fancy parties because no one's going to get any money from me. The Bat family is a little worried about him because they know if, if, he, if he stews too much... In the the Dark Knight, yeah, uh, persona that he has, that he can go deep. He can go too deep. It's happened before. It's happened before. And we have our our first antagonist in this story that will uh, essentially minority report Bruce Wayne by the end of it. Um, we will get into a little spoilers as mentioned for Batman 125. It's been out for a month now, over a month. Issue 126 is going to be preserved for you, comic fan. But we do have the Penguin who is threatening to kill every single person who has wealth. Above $5 million. 
he's like it's more like people who inherit mel- wealth from their parents or something. He's got some weird kind of scheme he's announcing to you know Gotham City here. He's gonna recount a bunch of people essentially. He's trying to gain some brownie points, I guess, in in the eyes of the poor, which didn't make sense to me when I read this because Penguin is very you know very famously rich. Yeah, he's, you know, he runs a, a nightclub. Well, it'll make sense to you in a little bit because we'll find out shortly that this penguin isn't actually the penguin. But let's keep it rolling because we have a a fiesta happening. You know, we have a big gathering of a bunch of wealthy individuals and Batman knows that penguin is about to attack. He's going to try to kill a bunch of people. I find it curious that when the Gotham City wealthy are told, hey, there is someone who's specifically gunning for the wealthy of our city. What they choose to do is a big gala where they can all come together and kind of celebrate yeah. each other. Get all these targets in one nice closed place. Right. It'll be fine. It's it's just... Nothing uh, bad ever happens in Gotham City. Well, and uh, Batman knows what to expect in this situation. You haven't fun yet. Comic family, you haven't fun yet. We're talking about Batman getting framed. We will find out in this issue. I'm so glad we got this in here. I know. We, we have to we have to hit him with the ending because that sets up oh, everything. Uh, that, that whole sequence at the party was kind of... I want to save the action scenes for the comic book. Sure. Band, we don't want to show you the whole part, but basically Batman foils Penguin's plot to kill all the rich people. Penguin ends up in this hospital bed. Batman goes to visit him and figure out, you know, what's your plan? Uh, you know, getting getting all angry at him. That's right. Uh, turns out Penguin, uh, I think he, he takes a cyanide pill to kill himself, and uh, Batman is in the process of trying to save him. And then a nurse walks in at the worst possible time, which is hilarious. <laughs> like, yeah, this is actually... I'm so glad you got this picture. It's I, kind I of laughed. funny. Yeah. His family's like, oh, this isn't what it looks like. This is not what it looks like. Wake up, wake up. And then she just walks in. <laughs> just, <laughs> just that busted, like the, the punctuation marks over his head really seals the deal. They just scrams and bolts out the window. That's it right. Doesn't look good. So now Batman is in trouble for, uh, he murdered the penguin. At least that's what it looks like. Okay, so bringing it back here, comic fam, uh, Bruce Wayne, he don't murder people. This is something that... I think um, a lot of criminals kind of, you know, this is like the part where they make Batman seem like less of a threat because they know at the end of it, he's not going to kill him. So the fact that we have someone who thinks they saw Batman murder someone, that's a big deal. And even Bruce Wayne has put measures into place of preventing himself from going that far because he himself has dabbled in the dark. So here we go. Dabbled in the dark. Dabbling in the dark. Yeah. So what? this is his, uh, his fail-safe, essentially. What I don't if, know what this is, is my thing. Well, I think, that it, I think it's becoming pretty damn clear because we're seeing a murder take place. Rather, the, the commun- Gotham thinks they've, they've, uh, they've caught a murder um, um, in action. Sure. You know, Batman strangling Penguin. He has gone too far. He's officially started the killing people. The crime, caught red-handed. Doesn't look good. Kalpa is in bed. He is harmless. Right. He's actually dying. Yeah, he's, he's he's about he's about to go. So he's just going full violence now, full on taking him out, and that also communicates to Gotham. All right, well, Batman's actually ready to go all the way. So that has has one very fascinating um, way to take the narrative, which is the criminals are probably have more things to be scared about now than ever. And the ramifications for this moving forward are going to be interesting. If everybody mm-hmm. now thinks Batman is, you know, the gloves are off. And then with the gloves being off, imagine if Batman one day lost and he said, you know what? I'm going to go full Dark Knight. I'm going to start killing people. We're going to punish her this stuff. Right. Well. And all of that is terrific setup. Yeah. And it's a great way to kind of pull a fast one on you and give you the one-two punch here at the very last page because suddenly an entirely new, different antagonist literally rises up out of nowhere and leaves you with a very, very powerful cliffhanger. That's right. We have... Um, Batman already thinking about this before. He has to have a fail safe. So that's what you think, right? And that, and, Th- and did and I just not pick that up? Because I got the impression this, that he had nothing to do with this, but maybe I'm wrong. Because it, it certainly looks like a Batman robot. I think that the beeping in the beginning of the issue is mm-hmm. a kind of a protocol measure that if something does happen where, where Batman does go full vigilante and start killing people, full revenge, that there is a... Fail safe. So you're saying Bruce Wayne built a Batman robot in the event that he snaps and starts killing people and he needs to build something to take himself out in case he loses his mind later. I could be wrong, we're, comic we're fam. You got to read the next issue of the run. It's a, it's a brand new run. Uh, and Do it. 
the, the way this ends, the way it sets up into the following issue, which is one of the fi- one of my favorite comic books I've read in a very, very, very long time. It's a it's a fantastic. This this first issue was a lot of setup, and it didn't really grab me the way I wanted. The second one completely delivered, and I am very much hooked. And I love Chip Zdarsky. Okay. Um, we love Chip Zdarsky so much that we actually um, follow him on Instagram. We've already given you a handful of Instagram pages to follow. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to give you another. Um, Chip Zdarsky. And he's hilarious. All right. So take a look at this. We have um, him. He, he created his own Twitter. He changed. This is his Twitter. This he, is his Twitter. He, he changed, changed his, his own, own Twitter, Twitter to That's be a yeah. fake MCU casting website. So it literally says it's at Zdarsky, right? But. The title, he has his own, he has a Marvel logo instead of his face now, it's instead of his avatar. And then it says, it's still up, by the way, star MCU casting news star. So this is Chip. He's, he's it's, messing with people, Chip having being fun, a little right? troll, because that's how he is. So exclusive, Marvel's uh, close to signing Chip Zdarsky to play Reed Richards in Fantastic Four reboot. <laughs> and, and you know what? It looks like him. He kind of looks a little bit like Reed Richards, but he, he took it one step forward. Um, take a look at he this. He included an uh, acting sample. Yeah, this is uh, this is Chip Zdarsky's um, uh, casting audition tape um, for <laughs> for uh, Reed Richards. Let's see. I want to hear in the comment section what you think. Should should he be the next John Krasinski, the next Reed Richards in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Ben, Sue, I want to say Johnny, get on the rocket, get on the fucking rocket. <laughs> Like he forgets his name. Forgets like me. he forgets yeah. Johnny's name. Like whatever, whatever you. Yeah, let's all go. <laughs> He's good. just yeah. sign him, please. How do you not like Chip? That's I who's writing that Batman right now, comic fam. It's, it's a good writing, time to be alive. Also writing Daredevil. That's right. He has been writing Daredevil for years, and it's also been one of the best books being made. All right, comic fam. Um, let's keep it. Also, Stillwater. Oh, Roland. Oh, Stillwater. Also, man. Newburn. Yeah, just keep it going, man. Also, his own Substack. Yeah. Have you following his Substack yet? I know. I'm bad. You're bad. There's too many Substacks, man. There's too many, and I love James Tynan so much. Oh, that, like, James is. I got to branch out. I got. I James need more. is doing, doing like next level stuff on Substack. I I have to, I have to follow. Dude, I'm like every time he sends me something. Anyways, we're talking about Chip Zdarsky. Go go check out Chip Zdarsky, Batman. Go check out Substack, and also check out the best comic app in existence to learn about funny books. It's called Key Collector Comics, and there are multiple categories on there. This has been the app of choice for the entire show cast. Um, we all use it every single day. We use it um, in person when we are hunting. We use it at the shop. We use it when we're pricing comics. We use it when we're trying to get suggested pricing. Um, we use it to learn about comic books to keep up on the industry. And I'm talking our Overstreet Price Guide Advisors, which we have two on our show. Um, myself, Ryan. Not me. Not me. Ryan, you don't use it anymore. I'm you not stopped. an Overstreet advisor. <laughs> no, no. I use key. I love the alerts, man. The alerts, right? That's where I get like most of my absolutely breaking news. Like, oh, so and so book got options. Like, oh, cool. That's how I get I all of my alerts. If, if you're wondering, like, how do you keep up with the industry? Well, you have to have it all condensed in one spot. And also, like, they have the ability to know when you should be notified and when it's like a soft notification where it's not going to alert you on your phone. But hey, right. when you get to it, take a look at this. But also, Oh my gosh, this is also what's happening, and you got to be up on it. It's like you don't have to keep up with it. Nick will do it for you. That's right. <laughs> I don't have to keep up with anything. It's all there. Key Collector Comics, use code TOM101. The app is free in its entirety with the code for two weeks, however. Um, the app is free to everyone if you want to catalog comic books, you want to get suggested pricing, look up a lot of categories. Um, but if you pay, a very little amount of money. $2 a month. $2 a month. You get access to a bunch of categories that's more about enhancing your spec game. You, you get recommended hot books, recommended, um, you know, optioned categories. You unlock everything categories. That, right? There's no other tier. It's just $2. Yeah, it's just $2. Or you can pay, I believe it's like 20 bucks for the year. For the year, year. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, so if you're looking at taking your comic game up to the next level, utilize that code, support the show, but also try it out. And if you don't want to use it after that and you just want to get the free stuff, then... Use it for that, but it will enhance your comic collecting no matter what. And we're going to talk about some key books that are affordable because you don't have to spend 20, 30, 40, 100, 500, or a thousand dollars to enjoy comic collecting. And you don't have to do that if you also want to like get into speculating for a little bit. You know, you want to maybe invest in some books, you know, buy some baby, little baby spec. Yeah, little baby spec, you know. There's different degrees of, you know, I'm going to throw out my whole mortgage and buy this gigantic comic or, you know. Throw down ten dollars on some of these books we're about to show you. That's right. And the way I look at it is, you know, I I would if I found any of these books in high grade for ten dollars, even if it doesn't pan out, I'm not going to be upset about it. I like these books, and that's what this show is about. Um, spe- uh, this segment that is. Um, so the first one we have for our five ten dollar keys is Hercules number one 
first solo title series featuring Hercules. You know, even though this is a kind of a, a fairly later book, you know, 1982 is what this book is. Um, we have Hercules cast and appearing in the most recent Thor Love and Thunder movie. So Hercules' first appearance, which happened in Journey into Mystery, is a book that spiked up so much a long time ago. And then there's other series like this that start to spike and people forget about. And I remind you about what's going on with Wonder Man right now. Um, it was eight, nine months ago, maybe even longer, that Reggie collects, shout out Reggie, over on his YouTube channel, that he was chatting about the West Coast Avengers. He was also chatting about potential characters they can incorporate in She-Hulk. And he felt it a good, affordable spec to look at Wonder Man, not realizing that there would be a Wonder Man announcement um, the same director as Shang-Chi, who would then get the Kang Dynasty um, movie, Avengers movie in Marvel's Phase 6, which only added to his cred. And now Wonder Man issues, minor keys, they're all spiking. This is a similar situation. We have Hercules 1, first solo title series. This is a book you can find in the dollar bin. If you find it in high grade, $10, I think you're going to be happy regardless. What do you think, Ryan? And he was in Thor. Right. Seems kind of weird this would be so low. That's how I feel, Ryan. At Look least at in the credit scene of Thor, anyway. And it's a cool cover. Yeah, they got Hercules. <laughs> in space? In space. Right? Go for it. That's there we go. Very 80s. There it is. All right, next one on the list is Dazzler number one. This is the premiere issue of Dazzler, the first self-titled series. Also a lonely $10, but this right here has been a fun book over the last, I don't know, 10 years that I've been really heavily present on Instagram in the comic community. Um, comic Book Girl 19 would routinely point out this is her favorite mutant, her favorite superhero, I believe. And that would open my eyes to so many other Dazzler fans. There's a lot of people whose favorite mutant is Dazzler. And if you're not like big into mutants, I understand this one may just be a character. You're like, oh, yeah, this is an X-Men character. Well, I, don't, I didn't know people really cared about it. But the Dazzler fans, they love Dazzler. And there's an error print of this issue that we got to talk about. So um, the way you can tell the error print, all right, the way you can tell an error print, an error print um, of Dazzler number one, I'm going to actually show you a, a fun website here. Let's see if I can pull it up. Um, it's called recalledcomics.com. This is something I've been using since, I mean, geez, before the show was even in existence. Um, this right here is a great resource that anyone can use and one that will help you learn um, about just Low print, it's not just recalled comics, but it's kind of everything old and everything that has a, a weird story to it as far as the reasons why it may or may not have been recalled. It gives you kind of current updates on the status of this, this kind of thing. If you look at the left, these are all issues on the website that you can look at one by one. Um, but this one right here is the Dazzler error print. And if you're interested in getting a refresher outside a key collector about why a book is a, a key book, Maybe a little bit more info on it besides just like the limited description that kind of gets you there, gets you started on Geek Collector. This right here shows the actual pages. And what you're looking for in Dazzler 1 is pages 24 and 25 containing black and white um, pages. Whoops. Yeah, we call it a whoopsies. So keep an eye out for that, especially with the introduction of the mutants in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Really what Ms. Marvel was all about, Right. That's what they say. So um, now we are moving on to Dreadstar number one. I've seen, I've seen Dreadstar so many. We've put so many Dreadstar books in the mail call. I had no idea that this would be a $10 key. You know what? Dreadstar, it, it's definitely one of the, uh, it's just it's like one of the books that This is the perfect example love. of the kind of book I would flip right past in a, in a, in a bin. Dude, yeah. Jim Starlin, man. This is his, this is his character. Yeah. That's why I'm bad at this. He's got a weird, um, a weird name too. He does. Yeah. I laughed when I typed it in here. But still. Vanth Dreadstar. Vanth, yeah. Vanth. Vanth. Ugh. It doesn't really roll off not, the tongue. It's not fun to say. But here's Rolls the thing. Rolls off the teeth more than anything. True. This, is the, this actually is the issue that kicked off Epic Comics over at Marvel. Um, this is the first appearance of the character. And there's a really great Dreadstar community. So much so that there have been multiple Kickstarters and Indiegogos. And right now... I just I want to point it out specifically that there's a, a a great time to support a creator in our industry that I don't think gets nearly enough. I mean he's he's gotten the credit, but I think that there's not enough people who really know that 
over the last few years, he has been kind of MIA in the comic scene, recovering from injury. Jim Starlin had a, uh, we did a video with him. He, he actually did an interview and we chatted about this on a podcast. A, I think it was the last podcast actually. Wasn't that and, long ago. And he's um, currently, he has an Indiegogo rolling with, um, with Dynamite Comics, shout out Nikki B. And it's for a Deja Thoris brand new variant, but also there are Dreadstar uh, cards that are being produced because it's not just the 50th year anniversary of Jim Starlin in comic books, it's the 40th year anniversary of Dreadstar. Um, so they kind of like comboed the Indiegogo and I wanna not just highlight a great book that has also come on spec radar at least three times in the last four years of covering comic books on the, on YouTube for the channel. But now's the time to, to support an artist, um, a creator, a writer that has really set the stage for all the cosmic stuff that's playing out in the MCU at large. Yeah. It's kind of unfortunate that you think Jim Starlin, you think infinity gauntlet, you think Thanos. And then at least for me, you kind of move on like, Oh, th Thanos. Pit Star Fox, Arrows, right. Drax the Destroyer, Pip the Troll, so Warlock. many other things that he had a hand in in mm -hmm. that same time period, if not earlier, and you know, deserves a deserves a closer look. Support your artists that you enjoy. We'll put the link in the description. Shout out. We also have Farmhand. You know, I'm a big Chew fan, Chew fan. But you know what? I didn't finish Farmhand, but I enjoyed it when it came out. Um, th actually, this issue premiered just as we were getting rolling Into on the, the channel. channel. Yep. This right? is one of the, I remember seeing this at Mill Geek when I first discovered what Mill Geek Comics was. Rob Gilroy, he is the uh, artist of Chew. So you know that the interiors of this are, it's, it's a fun read regardless. But Farmhand number one, $10 average sales. And with the long hiatus the industry took and producing in the industry um, because of pandemic, there's a lot of narratives that kind of like, came back on to spec radar and people are like forgetting that they were optioned just a year or two prior to things getting shut down July 2019 yeah optioned so, so things are like from from back then are now starting to come out if there had been no pandemic and this book went you know successfully and there was a show coming July 2019 we would probably be seeing uh, you know either a trailer or a first episode you know relatively soon but with the pandemic, of course, shut down the entire industry for quite a while, and this book may or may not still be on the back burner, as far as they know. Absolutely, ten dollars seems pretty low for something that's uh, that's going to make a show. This is this it's just it's just going to make a show. That's a cool premise. In development for AMC, and the premise is a farmer a farmer who harvests human replacement organs experiences strange occurrences as something sinister beneath the soil contaminates his crop. I think that'd be a dope show, and you know what? With uh, things all kind of changing over at AMC. I think it's about time we get some like a, like a, a new zombie narrative is probably uh, it's probably a good time for it now. That's true. They're finally uh, closing the door on Walking Dead. Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul are now officially all done. You know, AMC needs something else. We need something. And I'd be happy with Farmhand. OK, um, we're going to dive into a un dude, this is a, we're, we're not done yet. We're still talking about a book. We have one more. I gave we you four. The comic fans will be like, what the hell are you doing? He Tom? said five. He said five. He's holding out on us. What are you doing? You guys are going to laugh there. You're going to be like, wait a minute, this is $10? That's what this show's about. All right, look at this. Amazing Spider-Man, issue five. This right here is the second appearance of Silk and the full cover appearance. There it is. Second appearance of Silk and full cover appearance. First appearance of Goblin King. But you know what? It's really about Silk and knowing that a second appearance is this affordable and with a cover appearance. If I saw a high-grade copy for $10, I'm buying this all day long. Easy as that. I also want to clarify, too, this is the Amazing Spider-Man number five from, like, 2014 or so. Yes, thank you. Yeah, there's, there's, been, a, a, there's been a couple of Spider-Man relaunches, and you know, new number ones over the years. and Hence why people you. get confused about where they should start reading comic books, right? Amazing Spider-Man number five also just came out, like, a month or two ago. So, yeah, don't, don't get confused. Not that one. You're not that wrong, right? It's not good. All right, so we this have... has silk. Oh, my goodness. We have a... We got, we got him with Wildfire, man. We, we, this actually made the trending list, and I got to be real with the comic fan. We got to actually talk about how this actually came about. I got a call from Fire Guy Ryan, all right? Um, and when I say call, I think it was a, a message on Facebook. And, yo, you I hit me like up. the phone. Yeah, I definitely would have texted you. Sometimes I'll um, be waiting on a text from Ryan about something, but other times Ryan surprises me with a, a text with a lot of gusto. And it's typically when you are excited about something you read. The most excited you get in messaging is typically when you read a comic book that blew your mind. 
Yeah, and I'll send you some sort of uh, all caps, all profanity, all exclamation mark message. You know, all of the above, maybe yep. a little bit of everything. Tom, 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 read this. We got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. Read this. Whatever. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Can't wait for the next issue. We got to read this. We got to talk about it soon. So that's what happened with this book. And I, I, I need you to give uh, some context to our jokes we have made about your. I don't want to say your dislike because you enjoy some of what he does. Sure, Scott Snyder as the author. I am such a fanboy. Okay. I love me some Scott Snyder. Okay. All right. I, I really do. Um, but you don't I'm care for as many of the books. I'm a fanboy. Yeah, more measured. I like what he did partially with his, his – uh, he, he had a long Batman run, and there were ups and downs, like anybody else who's going to write an ongoing superhero book for that Some of long. the later stuff was in my favorite. Sure. But some of the earlier stuff is the best. Exactly. Okay. So right. I, I see what you're doing. I am also a gigantic fan of Scott Snyder's Severed. Sure. Standalone horror, original graphic novel. One of the novel. first recommendations I ever read. Phenomenal comic. From you. American Vampire, I also quite like from Scott Snyder. As does my dad. It's a good Some book. Stephen King goodness. I need to finish the whole run, but you know, I'll get there. Not the biggest fan of Noctera, which is his biggest book. Lately. Hey, come on, man. Noctera is so good. And then maybe we have We've to just do like another it. another We've, full yeah. round of Noctera conversation. Yeah. I think we do, man. It's really good. Yeah, it's an can. option and everything. Yeah. But maybe when we get some news on it or something, you know? I don't know. So I can give or take. And like, I, I've, I've been a little critical of Scott Snyder and Noctera and his book, We Have Demons, a comicsology original that came out through Dark Horse. Sure. It wasn't exactly my favorite, but I got all three issues. You know? There you go. It's more of the same stuff that I'm noticing. And, uh, I'm picking up on some trends that he likes to employ in his writing. And unfortunately, that trend is present in this book as well. But I think the rest of it completely overshadows that for me. Absolutely. It's a great comic. Okay. It's one of my favorite books I've read in a long time. So, yeah, we have a new, brand new title from IDW that's already optioned. The book came out, what, a week ago? No, it's been about a month. Issue oh, two oh, should no, be no. out soon. It was about a month. Issue two But the announcement knocked. about, okay, so the book came out a month ago. But the announcement of option status, I'm remembering now, there was like five different a week or two, yeah. Yeah, that was just a week and a half ago or so. So this book got hit with a adrenaline shot of interest, and for good reason. And you were chatting about this with me. If if the like announcement the, the happened, day or two of the book came out. Was yeah, so I would have talked about. So like maybe a week and a half prior to any announcements being made about this book, we have. I mean, why don't you hit we him with the creative it, team? Let's do it. We'll just show it to you. Dark Space is Wildfire, number one, from IDW Publishing. We have a book written by Scott Snyder with art by Hayden Sherman and Rhonda Padson. And it's damn good, man. This is some good comic books. All right, so we have um, a group of female firefighters who are all prisoners doing jobs because it's really all there is to do when you're incarcerated the way they are. Some of them are going to be there for a long time. Some of them are probably going to die in prison. So this is their one area of com where they can kind of gather uh, and, and a complete a task, you know, kind of give for to some of them their life meaning to a degree. Um, something to do. Something to do, <laughs> yo. Even if you get $2 a day. $2 a day is what they're getting paid to do some some crazy, dangerous Before work. Before we get into the book, I want to say part of the reason I like this story so much is because that stuff is real. Yeah, that yeah. That happens. Oh, for they, sure. They use convicts to do firefighting like this all the time and pay them $2. It's all very To do like, like, like really like simple, sometimes dangerous like painstakingly stuff. dangerous yeah. tasks and all that. Um, so yeah, two dollars a day is are what these uh, this crew is getting paid, and we have a great setup for something that could absolutely be translated to the screen. So much fun! Five issue miniseries too about a heist. I think so. I think, I think it's that's about what a heist. it's building up to. We got one issue, so basically we have the setup for this story at this point. But yeah, you've got a group of female prisoners being forced to fight a wildfire, and uh, very early on in this comic, you are told by our narrator that they all die. That they all burn to death, and you can see their burnt up bodies right here in the bottom right of this page. First two pages, you know, the, the intro that, that Snyder's able to accomplish is kind of something we were foreshadowing earlier, where right out the gate, you're hit with, okay, we, know, we now know what to expect throughout the entirety of this narrative. It's kind of mystery. Yeah. I really appreciate that. If, if they hadn't have teased this, I don't know if my uh, my interest would be nearly as high for this story. You definitely have brought up this page to me more than any... Uh, actually, uh, before one other page, which we'll there's, get to. There's, there's some, we, we went a little overboard with pictures on this book because there's, there's too many cool images to show you. And when I say overboard, because I don't want to um, like totally spoil anything that these, this creative team has done, um, some of these pages are already available online, I'd like to point out. And um, we have a title page and we have a intro page. Which, and, and a page that Scott Snyder has revealed himself. So really, we're only showing them like four-ish pages of the book in its entirety. Go get the comic. You go can, buy you the comic. find it anywhere, go get it. Yeah, that's right. All right, so um, we have uh, five individuals who are 
in the middle of fighting a forest fire. And they're going to decide to make a trip to a location that one of them happens to know is owned by someone who's very wealthy. It's a mansion. It's a nice house in the forest. You like what I did there, Nice Ryan? try. Yeah. yeah, you tried. I tried. But yeah, they're it's, fighting. A, it's a little bit of a reach, but someone got that. They're fighting fire, and one of them is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a house over here that's got a bunch of nice stuff in it. That's no, Nobody's there. It's all unprotected, and I know how their security system works. It's a little weird that she there's seems to know so much there. We about the inside out. of this house. There's crypto that we can we can harvest. Like There's, there's a, things yeah, to get. Yeah, weird crypto fortune in there, which you know, I wouldn't let that burn. But, you know, so they're going to go and try and steal all this stuff before uh, they stop the fire. You know, go go burn all this. And go, I guess in their mind, we're gonna go. We're gonna go seal everything. And by the time we leave, it'll all all the evidence will be burned away. Kind of like *Brave for Crime*. If you think about it. Absolutely, Fire Guy fire Ryan fire talking fire about fire fires fire. in comic books. We have a full shot, two page spread. That when I got to this point, I know it's not identical, but aren't you getting just a little bit of Jeff Darrow vibes to this? Okay, just a little bit. I, the the detail when you, when you really in, zoom yeah. in. There's so much to look at, all the small little accent lines all and everything. Purple, yeah. Yeah. And it's and it also has the this texture. on their faces and the, the green. Yeah. There's there's a lot of small detail texture that's not entirely necessary. It makes me um, kind of embrace the dirty work that they're doing. You yeah. know what I mean? There's It's like you're you're in smoke. You guys ever been around a fire? That stuff gets to your gets on your clothes. Your it kind of makes your skin. You can smell it. It's smudgy. It, 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 you start, yeah, yeah, you start getting smudgy. Face. Imagine what this job must be be like to be in the heart of it trying to stop it you know and i think the the art really plays into that. into that too actually too the health ramifications that being in all this wildfire smoke can have on somebody over time very true here we go also uh, wanted to point out some of like the just the it's not a whole lot of action the artwork here but but this but the subtle. panel placement it's creative and I, I really like this bottle coming out at you we have someone who's Drinking water, passing a bottle to another person, and from one panel to the other, the bottle actually leaps off the page throughout the panel, covers, kind of goes into the panel next to it. Crosses the borders. Yeah, it's like uh, pops out of the image almost. And then into the next image, into the hands of the person she's passing it to. Could have been very easy to just just draw a side view of one person tossing a bottle to another person, but this is like a weird perspective thing that plays with borders and panels, and it's just having fun with a really tiny detail. And it doesn't stop there with the uh, attention to detail with panel placements and how it could, you know, really make the the reader go from one page to the other in, in a non-traditional way. And we're going to see that beautifully done here in a couple of pages here. Um, but take a look at this next one here, which um, kind of shows you the, the, the variety in which the artist will push the narrative forward through non-traditional means. Really close shots with of the character, what they're viewing, shots of their face in five vertical panels. Yeah, um, Hayden Sherman kind of just went bananas in this. With look, this lay- this layout is is weird. You know, see, you don't see this all the time. Like five really thin, all you know, the whole page of vertical panels telling uh, the briefest amount of info about these. Kids. We don't really have a lot of. We don't know. They intentionally don't tell you why they're locked up. We don't get a whole lot of info on their backgrounds or like why they are. They're very intentionally focused on we're here to do the job. Let's get the let's 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 put out this fire. Let's protect people. Let's you know form a bond. They don't really need to know too much. But we don't know, need to know as readers, I guess, because I think they know what they each did. But I think the the reason why we have this five vertical panel page is because it's building you up for something else that's even wilder. This takes place, and then you get hit with such a creative creative decision these are all vertical panels so it's like he gives you a taste of five vertical panels to 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 make you view the 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 like environment appetizer. right gives you a little taste and then he hits you with this you turn the page you get this whole page spread ex- explain this. this to our audio listeners on soundcloud spotify stitcher and itunes yeah double page spread you guys might want to pull up the youtube video for this one if you're listening to this uh, we have a two-page spread here, which is just a visual representation of the monotony and repetitive nature of this character's life before prison. Her uh, going to work, coming home, cooking food, going to bed every day, over and over and over. Zooming in, you can see all of the same images repeated over and over into infinity in the center of this two-page spread, which I really appreciate that they made the center just solid white. So you don't get any weird gutter loss in the middle when you spread this book open. That was a nice touch. Yep, and it's all done vertically. Just as the last five vertical panels were on the page, this right here, we're looking at 
um, so many that it becomes a blur as you get closer to the to the center. But as it comes out, you can see a lot of attention as the images become clearer. Um, clearly over 15 that you can even make out vertical panels on each side of the page, right and left. I can't imagine what this must have been like to produce or even think of. It's all it's all very intense. And I do appreciate there's a bunch of little glimpses of this green stuffed animal, which uh, they don't really go into. Makes you think that this person may have had a child at some point who's no longer with us. I don't know. I appreciate the mystery, and uh, I hope they don't answer too much. This book is called Dark Spaces Wildfire, number one out of five from IDW. Optioned already. Um, and we're not going to be done talking about that page because there was somebody who um, had something to say about that very image. Um, and it was actually Scott Snyder. I'm going to pull that image up, but the uh, link looks like it's dead right now. So just give me a second. But, you know, what, we're, what we were chatting about before, though, the, the conversation, Ryan, it, it is very true. You hit me up very excited about this. What about the I title think... was like, so exciting? And you, oh, I have to point it out, man, you called the spec. Like, you may not have purchased a bunch of copies of this, but you, there was a part I of have... you that saw a potential you that was find, validated again. I'll, I'll tell you where my brain is. I was reading this book, and there are some comics where I get the vibe. I don't know what it is, and apparently it's a superpower, according to Tom. But like some comics, when reading it, I dude, I that think was the joke I told you. This would make. I a said cool you movie. have a freaking superpower. You're like that Professor X. That's what it was. That's what I said. I forgot about that. Yeah, and I sent you a meme with Professor X doing like psychic <laughs> powers, like yeah, that's quick. Because dude, this you did that movie. for. You've done that like, like no, like dude, we've been doing this show do for like four years now. Because if I do it, it'll look I, like I, I'm being an. I'd asshole. have to list. I'd have to have. There's like, been a few. None dude, of them like have Naomi been was one of them. None of them. I guess Naomi was made into a show. Yeah, that's the first. That's my first thing. I I guess I got right. Come on, man, you got it right. You got it done. You're not a specter, I mean, but just I'm just saying that the there things was... I like become movies. So I guess it's just I'm just awesome. Okay. So oh, it's a but chariot. The, the link is actually that's the one I want to see the most. Dude, chariot is so good, dude, and and that would be pretty damn dope. Um, and, and Google Chrome is 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 absolutely failing me right now. It's not uh -oh. showing me reels. So and this was a reel. So just bear with me, God. I'm gonna get it up for you. I'm not gonna leave you hanging. So the week this book came out. Um, I get to read uh, my comics. I used to. When I worked at Mill Geek, I read my comics a day early. So on Wednesday, mm -hmm. when the books dropped, I could talk about them with customers when they came in. Uh, I read Dark Spaces Wildfire, number one, uh, that Tuesday. And we had maybe three copies on the wall uh, the following day. And I told so many people that came into our shop that week, uh, yeah, this, this book was cool, that book was cool, but my favorite book this week was Dark Spaces Wildfire. And I pointed to it on the shelf, and some people would pick it up, and they'd be just be like, ah. Yeah. And they put it back down. And I would explain to them, it's really cool. You know, here's, the, here's the gist of the story and so on and so on. And they put it back. And then nobody picked it up. I don't know what happened to those three issues. They may still be at Milky Comics for all I know. Hopefully Russ at least pulled them down and read all three of them. I don't know what he's doing. They might not still be there. I don't work there anymore. Dude, this is the weirdest Seriously thing, man. Lose. It doesn't actually, like, this is like a dead link on all of IDW's reels. And I've tried multiple browsers. So, Kai fan, I may not be able to show you this. Oh, but, yeah. but but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it one one last shot. Let me see if I can just download it. Download Instagram Reels. All right, let me see what I can do here. Um, but give them a little bit of a preamble of, of what we're about to get. Let's recount it a little bit more. So um, on IDW has actually been kind of promoting this book quite a lot, which is cool because it deserves it. And uh, they did an interview, a brief interview. I think they just caught Scott Snyder at a con or something. Is what it looks like. And they asked him to give a little bit of his thoughts on his own book. What's your favorite which we are page? Struggling to find right now. Yes, trying to stall. You know what I could do? Because they don't. You know what I can do? I'll I'll pull it on my phone, and as long as I have the audio, I can just show the page that he's talking about. You don't need to see Scott Snyder holding the comic book comic fan. We're already giving you this. He is a very attractive man, though. He's a good looking dude, man. Good looking I dude. Need to, I need to get his Substack. I want that comic class. All right, I'm gonna pull up IDW. You gotta hear it. I think it's too damn good because it was so validating. And I feel like there's input. if there's one person who read this issue and had this same feeling that we did, they're gonna really appreciate listening to Scott Snyder just like fanboy over his own comic book. So, so come on. Let's hear it. Let's share the page too. Yeah, I'm gonna show the page. This is what we're talking about. Scott, imagine Scott Snyder holding this comic book. It says, <laughs> "Looking at Dark Spaces Wildfire Number One. What's your favorite?" Oh. Page from the book. Well, looking at Dark Spaces Wildfire One, it's very hard to pick like a, a favorite page or panel because I'm so proud of the book. But I think the, the 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 page that exemplifies what I love about doing this is this: like essentially, it's a double page spread 
where the main character, Ma, who's a correctional officer at a prison and works with women who are out on a forest fire line protecting wealthy homes even though they're incarcerated and make $2 a day, is thinking about the way in which if they stop believing in each other and believing in the rules of can happen on the mountain about thinking once you get to the mountain and you're on the line your past disappears once you're part of that fire line you trust each other and anything you did doesn't matter anymore you begin again on the line is her thing and it's redemptive and it's fun well looking at dark spaces wildfire one it's very hard to pick like a, a favorite page or panel because so that was him just kind of discussing like the challenges and also why this page was his favorite. So I just thought it was, it was probably a, a cool little thing. I wish creators would do this kind of thing more. I, I yeah. would love to peek in because that would be cool. Even during like the time where, you know, when, when Jack Kirby was going full Jack Kirby, just doing page after page, you know, going crazy, speedy, fast. They were like butchering some of his art because of the inkers that were chosen, you know, um, and people would complain like, yo, Jack, like your art is being like dumbed down. They're, they're shadowing characters that you drew and took the time to draw because it's easier to color and, you know, you're faster than the people who are doing the work to like give it accent and, and more, more flavor on the page because he wasn't reading his books. He was too busy just doing the next thing. And in his head, this is the best it is. It could be, and that's it. Moving on, moving on, moving on. I would love it if there was moments where it's like, ah, like what would it be like to have them experience their own artwork for a second? Just take like what Scott Snyder did. You know, imagine if we had Kirby reflecting off of his work like that. I couldn't even more. imagine. I didn't know that about him. That sucks. Yeah, man, it's it's interesting history. You just like there. basically invent an entire you know genre, and you don't even get to really experience any of it. There we go. Well, I love experiencing it with the creators when they when they hit the mic like that. So whenever we can highlight that, why not? Comment, fam, hit the like, slap the subscribe button. Can I complain about you, Ryan? Can we? Can I can complain? We get into that. I was just gonna ask about that. Dude, sir. we had a we had a moment, dude, and it's been a minute since I was like getting frustrated with you, but I got frustrated with Ryan. It happens every now and it. then. Yeah, sometimes. This has never happened before, and I hope it will never happen again because it was not pleasant for either one of us. Okay, um, let me hit you real quick with a uh, <sighs> with, with with our second sponsor. One of two sponsors that we have on our show. I'm gonna hit you with the second sponsor, Comic Fan. Come on, let's pay for the lights. Pay for the lights. But you know what? This is actually um, something that you will end up utilizing one day if you keep up on your comic book grind and you want to like better your comic books. I'm talking about Hero Restoration, HRComics.com. Hero Restoration is my Recommendation. Whenever someone says, yo, Tom, where should I send my comic books to get cleaned and pressed? And if you want to get some restoration done, like purple label stuff, send it to them too. Go fix up that book the best they can. They'll add paper if they need to. But if you're looking for a non-purple label, they'll do that too. They'll get you that blue label to the best of their ability, cleaning the books up. And I want to give you um, some examples of something that they do that's so well. On the mic, we have shown... A handful of times. Horrifying. Hor horrifying. Like it legit hurts. And I think we need to start putting the the fixed, the nice picture first and then the scary one. Because it's just like, Ugh. Sometimes they it's, get books that are really gnarly. Uncomfortable, yeah. They get gnarly books. But but here's the thing. We can show you books that go from like ugly to beautiful, right? We like can show you. the bottom of a pond for 30 years, kind of ugly. Just like yeah. what happened? <laughs> yeah, we, say, we say that they are, you know, trained in wizardry for a reason. But here's the thing. We're going to bring it back to reality of some other types of, of I want to show you other flaws. Those are the worst case scenarios. Yeah. We all have kind of more like these case scenarios, like more normal fall flaws. And this right here, I can tell just by this close up shot, we have the first appearance of dark side. We were just talking about Jack Kirby. Come this on. Can we get like a like a... for that transition? Hot damn. Look at this. I think just because he's in the chat, but does that look like Biggie Shack to you? It kind of looks like Biggie Shack. Okay. Comic fam, in the chat, you know who Biggie Shack is. Is that Biggie Shack on the cover? I think that's my He's doing some him. Kang the Conqueror type of shenanigans. Uh, oh my gosh. Traveling through time. Shout Leaping out Biggie Shack. pages of comics. That's how it happens. All right, so um, this right here on the top, look at these imperfections to uh, Clark Kent's shoulder. It's a small little crease, but we've all done it. And it sucks. You know, what do you do? What do you do? This right here is what could be the difference of a comic book really presenting well, um, getting a full grade bump. OK, because the first thing you're looking for are imperfections like this. I remember I had a Hellboy modern book. Um, uh, which one was it? I, I, I would I'll, I'll remember. 
I'll remember it by the end of this, this remember conversation. remember by the time you go to bed tonight. Death you wake up boy. in the dead of sleep like, ah, that was it. Ah, I'm going to think about <laughs> it later. But it was a, I remember it was a very I'm expensive Hellboy collectible. And I was thinking like, okay, I'm going to get this book rated. It'll probably be a 9496. What I neglected to spot was a it's slightly smaller, but still a, a kind of a, a just a, a light crease on the cover that I missed out on because I was focusing on the spine. And modern books, you kind of just like, that's where your, your eyes go. It's like, how's the corners? How's the spine? It's a modern book. It's probably fine, right? Fury is the Fury variant, virgin Hellboy cover, super low print. So this right here is what the book looked like. I was expecting a 9496. I got an 8.5. I was like, what the hell happened? Oops. And then the spine looked great. I took it out. Boom. Realized uh, I have to, I got to crack it. I got to repress it and send it back. And you know what? I would end up getting a 9.4 out of the book. So this right here, when I see an error like this, I always be, okay. I'm always brought back to that experience. Side note, it's those kind of experiences that give you that little bit of an edge when you're grading. You kind of got to go through those hardships, you know, those experiences of, oh, I missed something, got it professionally graded, and that was the cost to learn, you know, Whoops. and have that experience. Kind of look a little closer, I guess. But it was a valuable experience, and this right here is something that here restoration can help with. If you don't want to do it yourself, and also I thought it funny because we talked about comic bookers at one point. This right here is yeah. another case of a 62-year-old book ruining <laughs> apple, seed. apple seed. Yeah, it was left in a book for 62 years. This is what happens, yo. You it, press a book with that in it? Yeah. This oh, is, what does that do? Does that pop right through the cover? Is that, is that? Something like that. If, if you're that neglectful, yeah, that could pop through the cover. The next picture shows it like where he found it, too. Look at this. Just sitting there. Sitting there. And that's what it's like. Some of these old books, there's, they, we call them comic boogers for fun. You know, it's a joke. It sounds funny, but it's the best way to describe some of the like stuff. random stuff you find in comic books. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's a letter. Dude, I've, I've had times where I, I, I'll press that. a book and there's a letter on the inside yes. and it, had you not looked at every page, you would have pressed uh, the, the, the indent uh, of that letter. Perfect rectangle in the middle of your book and mess up multiple pages. This right here could ruin an entire book. I mean, oh, I wonder what book that is actually, because that right there is a um, that's the 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 the, the starfish from the yeah. Starro um, from Brave and the Bold twenty eight. Is that a Brave and the Bold twenty eight? Did we not? I'm curious now. Does the last picture show anything else? I don't have a last picture. Is I mean, the one two? before. Is that help? No. Really. That the ah oh, that. Someone in the chat, Somebody tell me, is that a Brave and the Bold 28? But regardless, apple seeds are indeed ruining lives, the Retro Savage says. Um, shout out to Comic Butch, who also rec recommends our second sponsor, Hero Restorations, HR Comics. Better your comic books and uh, let some professionals handle it. All right. I'm pissed at you, Ryan. We're, we're taking it back to, to the story. Because we did a convention. This wasn't the last convention. This would have been San Diego, but we never brought it to the mic. This is the first live show we've done really since. I haven't since done then. a podcast since before we went to Denver Fan Expo. Yeah, and did that podcast. Correct. We for, did a podcast what there when Whatnot Publishing was announced. That's right. That was the last podcast video I was on um, because I've been doing cons. We've been doing a lot of cons yep. lately. Yeah, you've been helping One out. of which was Denver Fan Expo, which I was... Uh, well, was I be, was I even planning to go that when the you called me? I'll let you tell the story. You called me and asked me to I did. come a couple weeks early. Yeah, you know, and big shout out to Lee Simonson Jr. who says that's issue ninety four of Justice League, the second John Stewart. Stewart Good. probably is what I meant. Heck yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. You were coming with to this convention of San Diego. I was not going to San Diego. No, this wasn't San Diego. This, this is before. San this is Denver. Oh right. my gosh, dude, we've done so many like conventions. A con every single week, your brain uh, scrambled eggs. Uh, yeah, it's scrambling up. I man. did Denver, Chicago, and now Seattle this weekend. Okay, there we go. That's so too this many was for me. this was like two cons ago. So we went out. We went to Denver. Denver, right? Colorado. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm trying to remember the why I was with why the I horse in the front. That's right. Oh my gosh, and I that got was the video. We should have put that. We should have put that on there. Yeah, the video, man. Yeah, that's a whole different conversation. Okay, so um, yeah. I had to go and pick you up. All right. Correct. So I, I went to Ryan's apartment. Tom does not know where I live. Nope, never been there. Uh, intentionally, by yep. the way. I specifically always wanted to hang out at Tom's. Yep. Uh, Tom never knew my address. He does not know where I live until now. I don't even know Ryan's last name. I'm, yeah. I might not even be named Ryan. But, anyways, you had moved, and this is a new place. Never sure. been there before. I drove down there to pick you up, and I told you, yo, we got to get to the airport because our plane leaves at like seven. Sure. So I'm going to get to your airport at like, or get to your, your apartment at like four o'clock, right? So it's like dark outside. It was earlier than that, dude. You told me to be outside waiting at 2. Oh, man. It 2 a.m. Was, was it 2 a.m.? 2 a.m. Oh, because, yeah, the flight was leaving at like 5. It was an early, early plane. It was like a 5 o'clock flight. And I was like, cool, I'll go to bed okay. early. Okay. 
I'll, I'll meet you out front. I didn't want you finding where my actual apartment was. I said, I will meet you out front. Of yeah, because you wanted, because it was hard to find it. And you I, didn't I, want to waste time. I told time. you that, but I also, I just don't want you to know where I live. Oh my gosh, I, I, don't, I hate my apartment. Guy. It's gross. You okay. Know? Don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm over Ugh. here looking for Ryan's apartment. You gave me the address because you weren't out there. And so 2 a.m. comes, you pull up. I'm not standing out there. You're by not the out there. It's 2 a.m. First red flag. I am looking and there's no Ryan. So I start calling you. Cool. And no then, answer. And I don't get an answer. So, do you like join the show? You're My on phone pay- is twenty four seven on silent. That might need to change right yep. now, but it's never. I, it's always on silent. So, dude, you join the show. You're on payroll, and <laughs> I'm over here like looking up your W two, trying to figure out where you live. Right? <laughs> What's this address? Two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, damn it, Ryan. Damn it, Ryan. But I actually, mean Uh-oh. it. I'm like, dude, we gotta get to the damn airport. So I'm searching for driving around a foreign apartment complex in the middle of the night with dude, no idea a, where anything is. And it's, of course, it's a freaking huge apartment complex. Right. This guy decides to put his noise canceling headphones on earplugs while he I sleep, sleeps. I sleep with earplugs, man. I don't play. And he's I and, and dude, I don't know. I guess your alarm didn't go off. So I figure out where his apartment is. And dude, it's late. It's late at night, dude. I am not looking to try to make noise in your apartment <laughs> complex. But I'm like, I see there's a window open where your apartment should be. And I'm like, Ryan, <laughs> fire guy, Ryan, Ryan. And, my and I'm calling my you. My neighbors keep their windows open too, so that you must have. Yeah. They're like, what is going on? I'm like knocking on your door. No, you're not answering the door because you have your headphones in. Comic fam, I was trying to get in touch with this guy <laughs> for like 40 minutes straight. Oh my god, I'm just snoozing the whole. You probably heard me snoring through the window. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna have to leave. I'm <laughs> yeah. gonna have to leave this guy here. He's gonna sleep through me picking him up. Like. What is going on? Fortunately, he, he got up. Fortunately, we ended up hustling. But dude, you're like, oh no, no, that's not how it went, dude. My I brother, mean, yeah, your you brother. brother. I'm trying not up. to. I'm not trying not to get I'll, too far into I'll it. Dox him, man. You woke my brother up, and you were let into my room. From my perspective, now we will switch to Fire Guy Ryan's okay. perspective. Okay, Fire Guy Ryan but in the house, comment fam. Sleeping soundly. Yeah. Ryan sleeping. Dude. Solidest sleep of my entire dude, life. You're sleeping. You got your your blanket in your in your hands on your side. Sucking my thumb. Yep. Right? Yeah, Beetle sucking position. it. I had yep. my binky and my bottle and all that stuff. And your headphones or you know whatever you're having your ears. Earplugs, man. Yeah. I don't play. Yeah. I gotta sleep. 30 Q tips. 30 for some reason. Q tips. I don't have earplugs. Yeah, I just mash a bunch of random <laughs> things in there until it blocks out the sound. There it is. Anyway, I'm snoring the sleep of the dead. 2 a.m. Suddenly I, I wake up, just, you know, something happened. I mm-hmm. look over in my doorway. There are two shadowy figures going, Brian, wake Ryan. up, Brian. And I'm scared. I'm and like, I'm oh. getting irritated more as I'm yelling at you. Right. I'm realizing there was no hope. <laughs> there was no hope had, shout out Zachary, had not yeah. opened that door. If and you had to woken him up, yeah. he heard from his room's farther away from the door than mine. I couldn't um, believe whatever. it. Whatever. But anyway, I was like, I remember you were like, just like oh, okay, whatever. And you're like, get up. <laughs> yeah, we got to like go <laughs> right, right now. now. Like, yeah, okay, I'll get up. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> not now. Get up. We're going. Yeah, but we made the flight. Was, we made it. It was no problem. And uh, But but dude, it was like, dude, it was a solid 40 minutes or so of me trying to be loud quietly in your parking lot. Wow. Yeah. That part I missed. Yeah. You yeah. didn't miss it. You missed it completely. You didn't hear it at all. No. Yeah. You were, so you were now dreaming. when we went to C2E2, uh, Tom was like, <laughs> you're sleeping over. I had him over, comic kid. fam. Yeah. I'm like, yo, dude, you're just going to crash we're in my not, place. We're not doing this again. I'm not doing that again. So he came over and like, crashed. I was like, I'll settle. I'm going to get up this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no you're, you're coming over here. So, Oh, my gosh. Thankfully, yo. this one is uh, a local con. So hopefully, you know, I'll just drive there. I'll meet you there. Oh, that works. Yo, snap. We got Doug Bratton in the chat. Oh, hey. Big shout out to Doug Bratton. This is the gentleman who co-wrote Isolation with with our homie Reggie freaking collects. We love those guys over there. Reggie did his first comic book support independent comic book creations. And this month, actually, you only have a couple days left to secure the box on what not only because we're doing our last chance box you there. You missed the cutoff. Yeah, you're going to have to pay a little bit more. You missed the, the membership cutoff. If you join the membership, you will get an invincible um, number one next month when the boxes go out. But we are finishing assembling the mail call this week for August. And every box gets a Tomb of Dracula 1 homage by Nate Made It. Because when it's dope, it's really likely that Nate Made It. Of isolation number one. Because when my homies make a comic, you support them. That's how we do it here. Doug Dr- Bratton, you made a hell of a comic book. Well done. All right. Um, so, Ryan, that is what I have to say. I nearly wanted to get you canceled from that. I was going to 
um, blare the whole thing on the internet, get really emotional about it, and get you canceled. But then I thought, you know what? No, that's my What homie. you should have done was like when you and my brother saw me sleeping, you should have just recorded me for like a little bit. Is that what you want to do? Blackmail. And then, and then started going. I would by never it. do that. That is unethical, right? <laughs> just take a quick picture. Be like, look at this asshole. Horrendously sleeping unethical. Through, sleeping through the con. So, you know what we got to talk about now since we're talking about getting canceled? Uh oh. We're talking about what's going on over at DC. Dude. So, Ryan, we you need, are a big we, fan. We've needed to do this for a while. Yeah, we're just going to catch I'm scared. The, I'm very nervous, but I'm also, I like some of the f- signs that this is. Yeah. Um, there's You're good right. things to talk about. There's bad things to talk about. Um, but we're talking about the cancellations that DC has done. Ooh. Just rapid fire, right? Just, just one after the other. It's looking grim for a lot of things. And I think it all was a big realization when Batgirl got canceled because the filming had already wrapped for that. The fandom was already hyped for that. It's been in development limbo since like Joss Whedon was involved. True. And that's before he got canceled. So we're, we're going back years now, different, like four all years. Different kinds of cancellations. So, so we're talking about um, kind of like a new, you know, taking a step back and seeing like, where, what are we left with and where's like the, the production headed? Because if there's members who are specking on the DC universe, I think it's these types of conversations that's going to help with that. Um, also, it may give you some ideas of maybe where to allocate some of your purchasing if you're looking to buy comic books that are of dc nature especially the ones that are on this list someone like me who is a fan of dc and wants them to do a good you know a universe and so for them to reach their potential because they've been floundering like a weird the weird weird step cousin of marvel for so long now it's just not working so while these cancellations may sting yes hopefully it is a necessary pain in order to build something great in the ashes okay so we're going to start off with some um I want to start with the canceled stuff because there's less canceled stuff than the stuff that isn't got, you know, that hasn't gotten the axe. And I want to then talk about what we think could get the axe and then the ones that seem pretty damn safe and what we hope to see in the future. So let's, let's zoom out then because DC is merging. Warner Brothers is trying to merge with, uh, I think, Discovery. True. And they're going to, co- they're combining apps and HBO Max and, and there's a whole bunch of moving pieces at work right now. DC already has so many things in various stages of production. You've got like, the um, Aquaman sequel, the Black Adam movie, are basically ready to go. They're pretty much ready to come out. You've got other movies like The Flash, which we'll get into, uh, and a whole bunch of other things that are further down the line and not really ready to go that are sort of more up in the air. We thought we would go through them and kind of see what we think. Absolutely. I think we should get into it. Let's start with um, some of the canceled. Currently on you know cancellation, the slate, it is what it is. Um, we're, we're not getting a Leslie Grace bat girl movie <sighs> which is to me unfortunate they were going um new 52 accurate with the costume I like this um, look. You know, brendan frazier um as firefly i was really excited to see him in the dc universe wasn't michael keaton in this movie too we have heard that we were going to see michael keaton as well um and who knows we may find out as time goes on um what ha- what they had because they had filmed the whole damn movie the whole movie the whole which is kind of nuts to think about something like 60 million already invested 70 and million I, can't, I keep comparing it to new mutants yes Marvel kicked that can down the road for years. They were like, oh, it still needs work. Yeah, it doesn't it's matter. It's not good enough. We're going to tinker with it. We're going to add some stuff. We're going to reshoot some stuff. It's not good. Nobody likes it, but we're going to work on it, and then we'll put it out. Yeah. Or Morbius, you know? Yeah. Everybody knew that movie sucked ass. It got released twice, and Batgirl doesn't come out once. Yeah. How bad does it have to be for them to just say, we Yo, can't even show this Yo, movie? I'll tell you how bad it has to be. They compared it to a long episode of a bad CW show. Yeah. Ouch. Which brings us to this. Okay, so we have like Legends of Tomorrow also on the slate of cancellations. Um, we also have Batwoman, which kind of started the domino effect. Like this was this was the one that started earliest, I think, of this whole list. But this was like months ago. I think this might have been canceled before all of the Discovery merger stuff. True. I didn't pay any attention to Batwoman. I didn't watch it. I don't really pay much attention to the CW stuff at all. But I think this got canceled before this current drama. And The Flash, of course. Um, the, the Arrowverse is, is finally coming to an end. And I think what we have to do is also look at um, the, something that's similar to all these besides one other, and we'll get to that as well. And we could put Naomi on here too. Because sure. around that same time, Naomi got canned Naomi. as well. Um, there is a level of superhero quality expectation that has officially been set since the start of the Arrowverse and the CW universes, right? Okay. So you have the CW shows, and then you have the... Shows that would premiere on Netflix. You have the shows that would premiere on HBO Max. Daredevil stuff. And then the creation of like the greater MCU at large and, and, and what that means. Okay. And then the R-rated DC films even. These are, it's pushing boundaries. 
CW shows started to become like the the lowest tier. And but back when they started, oh, it was what we had. CW started like Arrow first dropped like right early New Fifty Two, which was like 2011, 20, yeah, twenty eleven. I want to say twenty twelve sure. maybe, which is like the time of Avengers. That was pre you know Netflix Daredevil any of that stuff. So that was what we had for you know TV superhero shows, and right. they had their own connected universe. They were doing some cool stuff that we hadn't seen before. I enjoyed the first few seasons I of The Flash. The first few years of Flash. I'll and probably Arrow. watch it again at some point. Yeah. But here's the thing: I'm gonna watch it again the same way I'll eventually watch Smallville again. You know, in the background, in the background, you know, not, 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 not too closely. You don't have to pay that much. You know, it's not that big of a deal, but Hey, yo, this was I, my favorite of the CW shows easily. Agreed. Arrow Agreed. was like decent for one season and then it got really bad. So but here's the thing. Bad. It's, it, I wasn't the demographic. I understand that. And there's a lot of kids that this was okay for them to watch, even though it's a little bit more mature. Sure. You know, kids are watching a lot worse stuff on television. This was actually pretty tame as far as maturity goes with, with killing involved and characters dying and things like that. There are definitely more mature superhero shows that kids should not watch, like Watchmen or Daredevil. Absolutely. So um, there was one anomaly to this whole list that I'll be real, yo. I, I, I'm i okay with the CW stuff. The CW stuff had its run. Naomi was, that was a bummer. I that wish was it was better. It was a little early. I didn't watch it. I was, I was kind of nervous. I watched the first couple episodes. Okay. I'm like, okay. I like the first one. I thought they did it justice. You know, I'm like, okay. okay, I can see where they're going with it. But then it's just, it was so CW. It was a so CW. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then move past it. They need to just flush the entire CW in my mind. Get, over, get past it. I'm disappointed in this. I know it was a reach, but Wonder Twins being canceled. This was one where I'm like, damn it. Because it's so weird. It's such a strange, not just mashup of like, uh, of, of characters or actors and actresses, right? Like the, you know, the, we have the person from Riverdale here. Um, I'm not as familiar with her, though. Is she, is she from Riverdale as well? No, I don't I believe so. That's not uh, Midsummer. <laughs> that's not Yelena. No, Bologna, no, that's right? definitely not Yelena. It no. looks like her. No, um, but but Wonder Twins on screen, it would be so, so funny. You know, it's so strange that they would have to make it a, a, a comedy or a very serious, like kind of flip the script and have it be super serious, kind of like they did with Riverdale to a degree. You know, when Archie sure. and that whole run, even Sabrina to a degree. So I was hyped about this. I was going to watch it no matter what, at least the first few episodes to see if, you know, if they, they reel me in. But it's canceled. But right. it's also, well, it's, this is a good reminder that not every single, per, every show, not every single show is going to work. All right. Not every single show is going to work um, on the screen. Especially when, when a show is, uh, uh, stuff like this can take long to, you know, you got to write it, you got to cast it, you got to script it, you got to you got to get everything ready, you got to build the sets, you got to edit it afterwards, special right. effects, all that stuff. Like it's all it, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of shows don't pan out. Okay, so let's uh rapid fire some of the other ones that are currently in production and I want to hear your first immediate thoughts. We're not going to spend too much time on it, but these are the ones that are actively happening and I want to know if you think it's safe, if you think it's not safe. Interesting. Um, let, let's make it happen. Let's get some perspective. Perspective. Rapid fire. Blue uh, rapid fire, Blue Beetle. I think that this this movie, if, if they can cancel Batgirl, this is this is up for cancellation before, as well. Before, before I would have said too late. They got costumes, they got the cast, they're filming it. It's too late. To it cancel. looks kind of cool, but it could be easy they to screw it up. Batgirl. Yes, it this, could be easy to screw it up. So I would give this better odds than some other things. What do you think, Black Canary? Question. Black Canary, I I don't know. The, this one's going. I don't have. There's I no way. I have a lot of faith in that personally. I mean, if Blue Beetle is 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 a, a, a concern, Black Canary has to be a concern too. I still haven't seen the freaking Birds, Birds of Prey, of Prey? that she was from. Yeah, it didn't do well. Okay, yeah, I know it didn't do well. I just I never watched it. Maybe that's why it didn't do well. All right, we the have Penguin uh, the Penguin, Colin Farrell, the Batman, super safe. They already canceled the uh, Gotham Central Police Department show they were gonna do spinoff yes. of the Batman universe. I hope this is safe. I would really like this because this would be all organized crime goodness. It would be amazing if it was. I don't. Fingers I, crossed. I think it's safe. I think the. Uh, the, the tie to, to Pattinson Batman is all we need to uh, lean on. Yeah. It's early, so they feel could good easily just say, screw it. It's too much work. We'll cancel it. Okay. What about this one? Eh. Mm. I, I, what do we, you know more about this than I do at this point, I think. At this point, this is on the list of, it's still happening. But as a Green Lantern fan, Ryan, yeah. do you really think that this is safe? Like, be real. I don't know how they're going to do it. I have been wondering how they're going to make this show. This it's going to be tough, man. It's Im Green Lantern. Almost impossible. I don't know how you make Green Lantern work in live action. So A, a Green Lantern show. And I want to know in the comment section below, Comic Fan, I'm sure to win this variant. Don't forget. And I want to remind everybody that we're going to be doing a whatnot stream immediately after the show. We are a little late. I just pushed back the time. Um, we're probably going to be wrapping up here in a poquito minutos. But join us on whatnot after the show. We're going to be selling some comic books. It's going to be a good time. Green Lantern, Ryan. 
I don't know how they're going to do it. It was a surprise that they were planning on doing a series on it. I hope this works because I'm very excited. It's been my favorite character for a decade. What do you think, though? Like in your gut? In my gut, I don't know how they can do it. And I think from a production standpoint, if I were in charge of a company, I would it would make way more financial sense to just pull the plug and save the money on this before it gets too far. Oh, as a Green Lantern fan, ow. Special effects, okay. all kinds of different characters, a weird convoluted story that's hard to crack. Yep. Like, unless they have a really good plan. Yes, but this would make this is the exact kind of thing that makes ex- studio executives like poop their pants and have nightmares. Like, how do you make this? How do you sell this? They got oh magic rings God. to make a big airplane with and a big boxing glove with. <laughs> you know? Good luck, right? Exactly. Oh my gosh. But here's the thing. As a collector of Green Lantern, if it doesn't happen, then I can snag up those keys that I can't really get now because right. they're, you know, expensive. Why we are talking about this comic fam. This is the kind of consideration they have to have because this may not be the best time to secure keys from Green Lantern, but it may be the best time very soon. Up to you. Spec out your own. Uh, Depends your how own badly risk. you really want it. Now, here's the thing. Harley Quinn. Now we're getting into animated show. Great show. But is it necessary to keep dumping money into it to keep it going? Did it already do what it's... Third season is out right now. They could end it. Three years is a nice run. It's a nice run. I love this cartoon. It's I would funny love it as to hell. Keep going. This is one of the funniest shows I've seen in a very, very long time. Everybody should watch it if you have HBO Max. Go watch this show immediately. It's great. It's really funny. It's not just Harley. It is the entire Gotham Batman universe. It's hilarious. All right. That being said... I, it could be safe, but... I wouldn't mind. I, Three years... Another. You know, if they need to cancel, I would rather them cancel this and then stop. You know, we had this. I want Green Lantern. We're getting Joker. This is happening. They, Joker too. It can't not happen. Do you have to spend more Correct. time on this? I mean, dude, I think this one's probably a solid. I like, dude, Harley Quinn, Lady Gaga. If that happens, yo, if you if you feel any way about Lady Gaga, just watch American Horror Story. You'll you'll be sure. rest assured that oh no, she can deliver it. And oh my goodness, I would love to see that rendition of Harley Quinn. And you know, this isn't my favorite. DC movie, but I'm nervous about the musical rumors that I heard. Yeah, I don't love musicals, but I'll, you know I'll watch it regardless. Comic Butch in the house. Hit the like button for the Butch, and uh, we we are back. Okay, Batgirl, we did so that. we did Batgirl. What there else? Should are be we more missing? after this one. Oh, though. Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you use the Aquaman there, photo tried, with Amber Heard. Is she even no, in the movie anymore? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Is she? I did not follow that trial at all, so you would know better than me. How did you I not file that trial? It was uh, it was captivating. Yeah, sure. and it was like comics and someone, Johnny Depp. Someone pooped. Yep, some, this one indeed poop. That's all I know. All right, here we go. Some poop action. We also have uh, Flash. Oh my this gosh, things, dude. This is this is just. A I nightmare. grabbed this picture because this Im- this like just embodies the reason I want this movie to work. The thing that frustrates me most is that I like Ezra Flash. It's unfortunate, but yeah, it's he was fun in the in the Justice League movies and stuff. The, the Snyder Cut was really cool. His his scene good was comic one of the relief. His scene was one of the biggest like redeeming factors of the movie for me, but. He screwed up so much that at this point it's like, dude, give me the dude who played Flash and CW and get let's get some damn Flash movies rolling. There's no way they can reshoot this entire movie with Dude, they're saying actor. that he's re- yeah, they're like he's Ezra is actually doing movie. reshoots right now. Ezra is. Yeah, if you're going to bring he's him filming. back, yeah. That's but it, there's no way for them to scrap it and refilm the whole thing with the CW Flash. They either dump the whole movie or release it as is and move on quietly. I don't know how they're going to handle this, but also, we have uh, Pennyworth. There we go. Sure. On Stars. There's a the lady on the plane next to me last weekend was recommending this show to me. By the yeah. way, I started watching it. It's Never not bad. saw Pennyworth. She said it was cool. It's pretty cool. All right. So, um, moving on to some other ones that I think are like, it's okay. Hey, I know it's, we're, we're saying, oh, this may not happen, and and this sucks, and we're worried about Aquaman. But you know what? There's some things to be excited about. Aboot. Let's talk about it. Mm. We have Peacemaker. Issue, no, uh, issue. What am I saying? We have Peacemaker. Here we go. Um, basically, all these cancellations are happening. Axe is coming down. Everyone's worried. And then James Gunn says, "Yo, I chatted with the execs. Peacemaker season two is fine. That's coming. We're, this is good. We're this good on safe. Peacemaker. This is it's one of the happen. few things that's a sure thing. Yep. At least season two. Peacemaker is happening. You don't have to worry about it. And pretty much James Gunn. Anything he's tied to, they're like, hey, you're gonna be fine." Probable Suicide Squad sequel. I don't know if that's been mm-hmm. confirmed or not yet, but what, I'm sure if he wanted to, they'd let him, you yeah, know. Of course. They of course. they had one of their best movies with James Gunn and this show. They're not going to just kick him to the curb. I think it's a sign that if they're saying, hey, we're going to cancel all this CW stuff, but also James Gunn, all the uh, spinoffs that you're planning on doing, you're good to go. It's going to keep happening. You're going to get your Peacemaker. You're probably going to get your Rat Catcher. You're probably going to get your um, uh, Bloodsport, even. You know, that, that spec's been going strong, yeah, too, over the last that. week. So... 
I think that if there is something to um, something promising right now in all of this information, if you're looking to buy and invest in comic books, if you can get deals on things that James Gunn is tied to, I think you're in good hands. I don't think that it's going to be um, that risky of a bet. You never know, but I'll tell you, nine eights of Bloodsport are hitting around a hundred bucks. That's it. That book was hitting two hundred plus just over a year ago. Around and, the movie, yeah, around the movie. You know, I think there was even highs of three hundred. It's a tough white cover. But let me know what you think about all of these shows in the comment section below. What are you worried about? Are you worried about Titans? Are you worried about Doom Patrol? Let me know. Um, don't forget, I'm sure you want a giveaway, and we have to talk about another book that we read because, hot damn, it was oh, yeah. spicy good. We got one left. It was, it was good, man. I'm very, very this excited about this. was a very pleasant this. surprise for me. So you know what I found very intriguing is that for a book written by someone who is so notable, not just in the comic book industry, but in mainstream, specifically the music industry. Correct. There's like no reviews about this that I could find. There's a couple. There's a couple of reviews of issue one that I that I stumbled upon. I, I, right before the show, I just looked on YouTube. Are there any reviews, uh, reviews on this book? But you can't really find much. And you can order this in your previews um, box or previews poll. Um, you can add this to your to your list. And they're, I believe, on issue 13 right now. I think so, yeah. 14's coming out soon. And it's called Ascensia. Read by John Delmayne, the drummer of System of a Down and owner of Torpedo Comics. And it says more about me, but I assume if somebody is coming into comics from the outside, like uh, Keanu Reeves on Berserker, for yes. example, or John Delman, I assume like, oh, they're a, they're, they're a musician. They're not a writer. Right. They can't write a thing. Uh, they're going to have their Matt this. Kent, right? Sure. Like, where is there somebody coming to help them, you know? Where's the help coming from? John no. Delman did this all by himself, and I, I was blown away, actually, by how much I uh, was impressed by this book. I liked it. I liked it shout, a lot. Shout out to John D, because um, one thing that he, he told me when... I, I told him, I was like, I'm going to review this book and we wanted to get some, some background information on it. He told me, he's like, yo, it gets better. It's my first book. The first trade is like me kind of getting my feet wet with it. But, but after the first trade, oh, I, I think I got, I, I'm onto something. And wow, seeing how humble he was about his comic, I'm like, yo, this is freaking John D, yo. Yeah, I've been listening to, to, to Systems since like, I was a little greatest, kid. It's the greatest book ever. All the issues are great. You know, don't dare say anything bad. But yeah, no, he's, he's, he's got a refreshing, you know, humility. Yes. Refreshing indeed. Um, all right, so we have Ascensia, and this is issue number one. And we actually, we I had to go the whole trade. I could not find a digital copy online yeah. to purchase, so I actually went and bought this from uh, from Rob, man under the red hood. Shout out! Some of you actually buy comics from him. He's a really dope dude, and he had some of these on his his table at the last convention that I went to. So quality product as well. The book itself is very well put together. Wake Entertainment, and it says here on the inside which I was, I was actually pleasantly surprised to learn. Wake Entertainment is the publisher. Wake Entertainment logo is by Frank Cho. Um, I'm curious, um, who is Wake Entertainment? I'm gonna have to find that out um, another time, but there are Frank Cho variants of this. Right. There's also Lucio Padillo variants, which I think we may have, I don't think I put that one on there, but you, you gotta take a look at um, the variant team because Torpedo Comics is one of the largest comic book stores in the country, um, has one of the most beautiful stores in the country, and they have more than one location. And John Delmayan, you know, he's like working with Jim Lee all the time. You know, he's working with a lot of great talent. So it's cool to see who comes onto this. And the fact that this is kind of like low key going under the radar over the last couple of years or not a couple of years. I mean, they're on issue 13, a little over a year. Yeah, about a year. It, it, it's pretty cool to see. And I wanted to highlight it. So Essentia is about a future dystopian world where humanity has been split off into two sections, one under a dome, kind of like crossover style. Okay. Came out before crossover. Shout out to Kates. Um, and the rest of humanity who live in, amongst just ruin. You know, you have you have your your impoverished area, and then you have where all the wealth is segmented under this dome. And it's essentially like the planet that Norn Rad resided in before, you know, Galactus showed up. And it's like a utopia of sorts. The good parts of this planet are kick ass, right? They're, they're very pretty. They're very well off. Yeah, you can see right here. The, the buildings are nice. It's, 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 uh, it's a gorgeous, it's an ideal place to live. And anywhere else, not so much. That's right. And there's a really fun balance that John takes us on um, as far as the narrative, go, narrative goes, where we're in a futuristic state under this dome, and I was getting some fifth element vibes, Matt Inko vibes, you know, I'm talking about like Mobius types of stuff where it's like, you know, cars are, are floating, you're seeing layers to the city, everything goes up, up, up and up where, yeah, you're in this like futuristic society that has preserved itself amongst the ruin where the rest of humanity resides. 
And the one uh, the uh, the one obstacle I had when coming into this book was uh, it's it's sci-fi, yes. right? And sci-fi for me is a genre that is hard. Uh, you, you're dropped into a new world. It's a little confusing. You get uh, the briefest glimpse of like how the world works, what the different factions are, what the people are, and it can be kind of hard to uh, get your bearings as you start going in the story. But if you keep at it and if you continue reading, um, I think issue one in this collection is the weakest. However, right at the end of issue one, even Boom. even at the end of it, you are uh, hooked and then carried throughout the rest of this story. And by the time I finished issue six, I was uh, a little upset to learn. I thought this was a contained thing. Six issue story. Turns out there's a whole, you know, like like we said, there's uh, probably a whole other trade worth. Absolutely. I wanted to figure out how the story ends. So we have a, and the reason why I think you, by the end of it, were rather enthused about the direction it was going is because, yes, it's based in a sci fi futuristic world, yes. But really, it's a murder mystery. Correct. And it has a layer of it that I can only compare to, as far as like in films, that really reminded me, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this, of Seven. Yep. You know, what's in the box kind of thing where we have murders that are taking place in this perfect society and a outsider who has to come in to investigate because in the society, people don't die. There's not murders that take place. They actually have a low murder count under five. I believe it was four. They said four. I don't remember how many years it 20, was. 20, 30 plus years. Long right? enough. Or four. Or four. Any murder yeah. is a yeah. big deal for these people. And now there's a string of them that they can't figure out. They don't know what's happening. They don't really have a lot of. If there's only four murders, you know, you're not going to get a lot of experienced crime solving detectives, you know, to figure this out. So they have to outsource help from Bethany, from the worse off part of their world. And this guy comes over and we follow him as he investigates the series of murders. I would say in six issues, there's not a whole lot of character development for any one character, which makes it a little tough because like, who is your protagonist? Who are you kind of rooting for? But I think it's that character. I think it's yeah. that it's this, uh, this, uh, this police officer that comes from Bethany who's never experienced a lot of the things he is um, doing in Essentia. Like he's even asking things like, how do you use a toothbrush? You like know, this weird future toothbrush. I don't know how to, it looked like it was like a light based thing where you just, you probably just point it and it beams off all the plaque or however that works. Right. You know, this is a world where um, individuals are living clear past, you know, a hundred years old. He has no they idea have, how to even like operate and with all this, you know, this new world. It's very, very different. Indeed. Um, so I liked getting to learn more about him as the story went on. Not as much as I would have liked, but we, we'd get a little. We also got a little bit more of the uh, the murderer, which right. was, was kind of nice. We got a little bit of his motivation, his backstory. It's kind of fun. So John D, he's a big fan of Golden Age comics, and there's definitely a vibe of of horror, of violence. This is a mature title. Yes. And some of the covers... Um, they're, they're very powerful like this one. Some of them are like mature as well. He goes full like bondage cover on, on one of the issues everyone's got to see cause it's done by Lucio Padillo and there's a, there's a naughty version as well, which is, which is very gorgeous. Very on brand for Lucio. For real. Yeah. Um, but this right here is a moment in the comic book Ugh. and it's like, I'm showing you on one end things like this futuristic landscapes, buildings, um, something that you can really dive into. And these sci-fi aspects are almost a break from the ongoing murder mystery. You just get hit with futuristic, cool sci-fi crap. And I love it. And then it will cut. And then it will and cut. show you a guy strapped to a table with his mouth, you know, rigged open. And uh, this is a cover showing one of the murders that we witnessed in one of the early issues of this book. So consider this. If this is a world where... Um, it rather a, a, a location that is so micromanaged that there is no accounting to more than four murderers, to, excuse me, four murders over the last 20 plus years, whether that's true or not comes into question. And if there was a serial killer, a serial killer that wanted to be found, wanted to be noticed, imagine Just leaving messages and stuff like the, like the worst ones do find me. You know? Yes. Like, come on. If there was someone like that amongst this community, Imagine how loud their murders would have to be, how gruesome they would have to be. Sure. How terrible they would have to be. And that's what you find in Essentia. And that is the, the, the ongoing gut punch that you get issue by issue that gets better and better as it goes. John Delman, you damn killed it. And I recommend this comic book. Also, I have to play this because uh, I had the pleasure of meeting up with John at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. He said, yo, Come down here. I want to give you a gift. I want to show you something. We're doing something really special. And I said, yo, John, I'm kind of busy. I'm going to try to be there when you're there, though. Just tell me when you're there. And he messages me again. And he's like, yo, 
come over here now. Uh, it has to do with Frank Miller. It has to do with J, um, J. Scott Campbell. And I'm like, wait a minute, what? You're telling me to just come by your booth. So I'm thinking like something's going on. And sure enough, he had a Frank Miller signing and he had an awesome signing with Frank Cho. But here we go. I want to show you this video that we recorded. Comic fam, San Diego Comic-Con 2022. I had to get Essencia issue 13 from one of my favorite stores in the comic game, Torpedo Comics. I'm reading it because I got, look at this. I got this signed and numbered copy. You got to get this book. All right. Frank, Cho. Frank Cho, baby. I know it's Frank Cho. I mean, there it is. Beautiful female form. I mean, no one draws it like, like you gotta look at his pens too. His but pens when he draws John. women. Anyways. I need more than one copy because I got to the centerfold and I saw this. We cut out this coupon, this issue, and the next sequential issues, and you send it in Valiant style to get either a J. Scott Campbell variant or a Frank Miller variant. That's right. Exclusive to this book. Exclusive to this book. This is nuts, and this is low print, and I'm curious, how many people are gonna find out about this? But this is why you gotta follow Torpedo Comics. Steve says boom, and of course, follow me here. We're at San Diego Comic-Con 2022, let's do it. Boom, boom. boom. <laughs> there it is, comic fam, so keep an eye out on that. I recommend it, because it's not only a good read, but he's doing some innovative stuff, and again, the power behind some of them, you know, he's got some, some damn big creators that he works with, so this is a low print run. A lot of people aren't really talking about it. And he's doing something that's going to allow members of the community to possibly get either a J. Scott Campbell variant or a variant by Frank Miller. So got to do my job. Got to let you know, because that's how we can geek responsibly, comic fam. Um, we appreciate your time today. I want to remind you, you can find us on Whatnot after this stream ends, because Fire Guy Ryan's Ryan in the house. Where can they find you oh, outside of our Whatnot boy. stream we're about to do? Outside of Whatnot, I am on uh, Instagram, at Fire Guy Ryan, all one word. There it is. Also on YouTube, Fire Guy Ryan, but, you know, three words, Fire Guy Ryan. There it is. Um, join us on the best new place to buy and sell collectibles. Um, and that was podcast number 68. We appreciate your time today, comic fan, as always. Geek responsibly. Enough said. And that's it, comic fan. We appreciate your time um, here in the chat. Thanks for joining us. Over 100 people just joining in. Ooh. It's how we do. You know, we got to talk about comic books. It's not just about spec, you know. It's not just about money. We got to talk about the damn books that we're reading because it's so so good. There's stuff on the inside. That's what I always say. Dude, Batman's getting so damn good. We got Chip Sidarski on I Batman. I really wish we could have talked about that second issue. I know. That's man. Terminator. Yeah, it's go, Terminator. Go read, go read it. Go if read you're it. sleeping on the new Batman run, go read it. It's terrifying. I know. And you just got done saying that you're like not big into sci fi stuff, but then you're like, oh, but dude, it's Terminator. It's freaking right. awesome. I know. It's a sci fi, man. Chip Sidarski is Apparently, when you mix it with horror, then it's okay. Yeah. It's for true. me, anyway. Oh, man. We got to get, we got to start writing our horror book, dude. Mm. Soon. Mm. What? We got to go pick up Ben Templesmith. We got to go. We appreciate you coming.